I'm gonna set Venom. Um, when you're in Linux, does it help? When you're in Linux, if you do dash dash help, sometimes you have to do dash help instead of two. I mean dash h, but it'll tell you what these tools are doing. Um, so MSF Venom is just an, a tool that we can use to create payloads. What's payloads? It's what the malware is using. It's a it's a piece of code. Okay, it's just a piece of code that the malware is using to do whatever it's you make it to do, <clears throat> or whatever you configure it to do. So MSF Venom. Right now, what I want to do, and this is why I said that for your exam, malware is distinguishable. Okay, every a Trojan is a Trojan, virus is a virus, whatever, whatever, right? In the real world, it can be a one piece. This malware we're creating right now, you're going to see how it can be a virus. It can be a, a Trojan. It could be a keylogger. It's really an all-in-one thing. All these different things that you're learning, viruses, worms, Trojans. I like to think of them as features, features to malware, because you can really have one malware doing all of this. So I have MSF Venom. I'm going to create my payload. First thing I need to tell it is, and remember this, y'all. I don't need to know this for your exam, so don't start tripping out about, oh, I can't remember the command, blah, blah, blah. Don't do that, all right? You don't need it for your exam. This is just good stuff to know. So first thing I'm going to tell MSF Venom that this payload we are creating is for Windows operating system. And I want to be specific and say it is for an x64 windows operating system but you have two different types let me not confuse you that much first let's just create the payload so i'm going to say hey msf venom first things first we want to make a payload to infect this guy our windows operating system over here that i was playing around with earlier next thing uh and the order doesn't really matter i, I never really go in the same order whichever one i type first Next thing is my payload. Now I have to tell MSF Venom what type of payload do I want to run? And the specific type of payload that I want to run is one that's going to allow me to log keys. It's gonna allow me to take screenshots of your computer. It's gonna allow me to tap into your webcam if you have it turned on. It's going to allow me to control your computer. I mean, that's what I really wanna do. But I just named a few different features or a few different types of malware with one payload that I'm about to set up. So I got to tell it the type of payload, Windows X64, interpreter, reverse, underscore TCP. Does that look right? Windows X64, interpreter, reverse, underscore TCP. Okay. All right. So this is my payload. Um, the more you do this, the more you pen test, the more you do anything, it, all of this just becomes secondhand memory, honestly. So don't beat yourself up if it takes you a while to remember it. I've been doing it for a while. So this is the payload. What's next? Uh, okay, I wanna tell it that this is an executable because we're gonna be launching it on a Windows system. Windows, all these applications over here. These are all executables right here. They all end with .exe. You just can't see it right now because it, that's just how it is. Um, the type applications are all .exe. So I want this piece of payload, this malware to come out as an .exe. And then I want to save it as cyberthursday.exe. But I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, yeah. I'm forgetting something really important. So have to tell the malware who to talk to so after we click it after we execute it on the windows system it has to come back and talk to somebody it has to talk to me so first of all let me get my ip address it's 208 if you guys remember from the weeks the june class this if config um july class y'all get there Say that again. How did I know which Windows device is what? <laughs> so, 
I can do this payload on anybody I want to, right? I'm just creating it right now. You're about two steps ahead, which is good. All right, so we're going to pick, well, remember that question, okay? Just remember that question. Let me take you through the process, but you're on the right track. So first, we have to set up this payload before we think about sending it to anybody. Um, in, in, in the real world, we would already know who we're sending it to. We would know what operating system we're sending it to. What we would be doing right now is testing it against a test operating system, which is this Windows 7 box. And I'm going to show you how to send it over there and, and and all that good jazz. But first, we need to make the payload, right? So we need to, we already have the payload here. We know the platform we're attacking. We know it's a Windows operating system. This is a Windows operating system. I mean, if you don't know the platform you're attacking, you shouldn't be attacking anybody. That's like the first step. So now I have to put in my IP address right here so that when this payload is executed, 68.1.208, when this payload is executed, it's going to come back to me. I also have to give it a door, a port number. I have to give it a port number. What door on my Kali Linux machine do I want it to connect back to? And I'm going to do 4443 just in case somebody's firewall sees it. Let's say, let's bring Splunk back into the picture. When I double click this on my Windows operating system, if those logs are being collect collected like they're supposed to, if my network activity is being connected like it's supposed to, a network analyst, a SOC analyst, a vulnerability analyst, any type of analyst will be able to see the Windows operating system trying to connect back to my Kali Linux machine on port 4443. I'm using port 4443 because it looks like 443. 443 is a legitimate port. Does anybody remember what 443 is? HTTPS. Exactly. That's the Hypertext Transfer Protocol Secure. Um, July class is okay if you don't know what that is. It's a protocol that you guys are going to learn about. But I'm using 4443 because it looks just like 443. I could use 443, but I'm not going to right now for a technical reason. And then we can explain that later. But I'm going to use this because if somebody saw this in the Splunk, if they saw this connection, they are going to see this port number. They are going to see it talking to me. They may overlook this because it looks so just like 443. So my goal is to have them overlook it. So I have the L host, I have my, oh yeah, I messed that up. Zo, you wasn't even gonna tell me, man. I got my L host, I got my L port. The format is executable. My output is cyber Thursday.exe. And there's a whole bunch of other things I could do with this. So we're just gonna run that, hit enter. If it doesn't work, it'll tell us why. And it worked, so, okay. The payload side is 510 bytes final size of the entire executable that's the payload plus any additional code that's in it and it's safe as this not that you need to know any of this and let me go and remove the other ones okay so here's our payload right here cyber thursday under well cyber thursday.exe now, as an attacker, I need to figure out how to get it over here. I know the type of operating system I I'm attacking, but I need to get this payload from here, from me, to you. Now, there are a few ways you can do this. The most efficient way, uh, July class, I think you guys went over this, is through phishing. A phishing email is sending the other, the victim, an email that looks legitimate, an email that looks trustworthy. And just putting this this executable inside of the email as an attachment, but telling them it's something else. You know, so I would literally do something like this. Whoops, wrong application, buddy. Let's do this. And this is going to look familiar to the June class. I'm just going to type in a quick email. Hi, I want you to download this 
application to view your job application yeah i'm hiring for a job of course i'm going to click it right and then i'm just going to put click here now all i gotta do is put a link right there i'm just going to put a fake link right now and six eight uh, well it's not fake dot two oh a dot four 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 three no let's do 80 80 ACP. Now look, if I send you this email, you're not gonna, you, you don't know what's under here unless you like, well, I'll tell you what to do. But if I send you this email, normally you're just gonna click this. If you're literally in the, currently looking for a job and somebody says, hey, download this app, download this application to view your job application, you're gonna click here. Not knowing that there's malware under this link you can and this is how easy it is to do an efficient campaign you just send this over to somebody and hopefully they click it if they click it it'll start at the back door so let's do this we're going to set up a web server on port 8080 and just imagine that you got that email and you clicked on the link, right? If you clicked on the link, of course I would have it configured to where you just downloaded this executable. We just started up a web server and we created an email. We told you to click here. The email takes you to this link right here and it just tells you to save the file you know you save the file it's here i'm not going to run it yet because i want you to see how it actually works hopefully i don't need those so this is our malware right here this is our bad guy if this works if i double click it it's going to open up a back door on my cali machine um i don't need this web server anymore What I'm going to do before I even click it for the June class, because you guys learned about protocol analyzers and you've seen it before, but I'm going to run one. Remember, you saw Wireshark, you saw TCP dump. I think you guys saw T Shark and Win dump, but this is TCP dump right here. It's a command line tool. Just like IP config and IF config, those are all command line tools. But TCP dump happens to be a protocol analyzer. So I'm going to say, hey, TCP dump, I want you to capture traffic on this Ethernet. Um, spit everything back out at me. Hexadecimal. Let's do that. And then host is 102.168.1 and port 4443. I only wanted to capture traffic on this port. I don't want to see everything else. If we don't set these filters right here, these are called filters. Uh oh, sound, sound like somebody's swallowing their mic. I'm gonna need you to take that mic out your mouth, man. Come on, bro. Come on, man. All right, so where were we? Um, oh yeah. So with network analyzers, if we don't have these filters in place, we're going to see everything being captured on this on this Ethernet. Pretty much like um, think of it like a switch or a router. We're going to see everything on this piece of device, but we don't want to. We only want to see things from this Windows host. That's why I open this up because I don't know the last octet of the IP address. Run IP config. It's 207. I only want to see traffic going from that Windows host. That's it. To and from that Windows host. I don't care about anybody else. And the reason we're looking at that on port 443 is because that's the port we set our malware up on. That's the door, the port, however you want to think about it. A, a port, port 22, port 443, port whatever, 
is simply a door to get inside of a system. All right. Technically, it's a port. Non-technical way to think of it or remember it is a door. So I'm going to do I get everything right? TCP dump. Oh, I got to run it as sudo, though. Uh, did, you, did you put down because you know it's like not secure? That's how you're able to run it. Say, say that one more time. So four 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 three is a um, back door. Did you pick it because you know it's not secure on the window? So good question, man. Good question. Great question, actually. I picked it because I know it's an open port that I have on my system. So it's really about first of all, I got to pick a port that's not being used. It's not currently being used by a service or an application. Second, I want to pick a port that's not going to get blocked by a firewall or an IPS or some device of that nature. Most of the times in the real world, a lot of ports are going to get blocked. Um, if I put port five 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 five, it's probably going to get blocked. If I put six 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 six, it's going to get blocked. Four 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 is always going to get blocked. Everybody knows that four 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 is Kali Linux. That's the default port that Kali is going to use to hack anybody. Um, we're not the only ones who know about Kali. Everybody else knows about Kali. That's why you really got to know what you're doing if you're going to try and successfully hack, compromise somebody with Kali. But I picked four 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 three because one, I know that. It's an open port that I have Two, I'm hoping, hopefully I did my research already, but I'm hoping that the Windows machine won't block traffic leaving the machine using that port. But theoretically speaking, I've already done my research. I've done my reconnaissance and I know that this port is not being blocked um, and it's probably not being blocked because it looks like 443. And I think you guys should have went over this too in your class three, disabling unused ports. If you're not using a port, if you're not using a service, it needs to be disabled. Um, when I'm when I, like this, this computer I'm using right now, if I'm not using it, when I step away to go do whatever, go ball, whatever, I turn my Wi-Fi off. If I'm going to leave my computer on because I was working on something and I want it the same way I left it, I'm just going to turn the, the Wi-Fi connection off. Just you can't do anything to me if I'm not on the, on the Internet. Unless I have somebody has a back door on my computer, but that was a great question, man. So we have this network protocol analyzer running. Now, do I want to hack it yet? Yeah, I think so. Make sure I'm not leaving anything out. We got this running right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and compromise her. So for me to compromise her, I need to run another application called MSF console. And you guys have seen this in class. 